Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to watch part two of our interview with Gianni Russo. If you watch part one, I'm sure you were fascinated. And as Rob and I have been getting to know this man, and we plan to go visit him in New York City. I said this at the end of part one, and I'm gonna say it again. We have fact-checked many of the things that he has said about himself. Those are the things that we wanted to know. Uh, things, uh, things that he has done, people that he's known over the course of his life. Uh, we fact-checked those, and those proved to be accurate. In terms of the assassinations that he's discussed and some of the things about uh, money going to the Vatican and so on and so forth, uh, those are things that he believes, things that he believes from talking to people and, 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 and going through those experiences himself. Uh, we want to tell you that if you have doubts about it, uh, you're welcome to have those doubts. Uh, but we are not about to say to Gianni Russo, Hey, oh, come on, that's just, no way did that happen. Uh, that's not how we operate here. Uh, we're TV journalists, we ask the questions, and you folks can believe what you hear. So uh, we hope that you'll enjoy this part two interview uh, with, uh, with Gianni Russo. Rob, what do you think? You know him uh, pretty well by now. Yeah, I know him very well, and uh, he, just stay tuned for the next hour. Uh, you're, you're gonna enjoy Gianni and uh, and his stories, uh, and also I would encourage you to buy his books. Uh, the the latest one is the Six Family. It's a fiction, nonfiction type book, and uh, and obviously the, his first book, uh, which was a New York Times bestseller, The Hollywood Godfather. So please enjoy what uh, what you're about to see. It'll be fascinating. Thank you. Uh, the guy that did the cannoli. <laughs> Uh, Gianni, wh uh, where do you go from here? You've, you've had uh, a life that uh, reads like a history book, a movie, yeah. uh, no question. But I've been blessed. I mean, it's, you, it, yeah. I, I'm not navigating this. I would yeah. sit here and be lying if I have a plot where I'll be in two years from now. Yeah. Well, you're doing a show. You're doing a show on Monday. Talk, talk about the shows and podcasts. Yeah, podcast yeah and, but I mean, as far as uh, when opportunities come, if I can make money with them, why wouldn't I But you're going to sing. It? You're going to get up on stage in front of a couple hundred people and sing for Sinatra in, in a couple days. Oh, yeah, I do that. Well, I do that while I'm here, and then next month I'm in uh, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. But, Gianni, can, can, can we agree, when Bobby Rydell was performing at the age of 79, and Sinatra at the age of eight, whatever, 80, Avalon is still performing. Oh, they all are. Yeah, 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 yeah all, all of them, Damn. Italian. You're Italian. And you're still performing in age 80, and, 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 and people are willing to pay uh, a bunch of money to, to see you. One colored day, warm by the sun, deep fall at nights, when we were one. Speak softly up so no one hears us. But the sky, the vows of love we made, we live until we die. My life is yours, and all because you came into my world with love so softly. Love. It's incredible to still be yeah, singing. It is. It is. I, I think it's a compliment. Oh, you know, absolutely. Yes. You know, absolutely. Yeah. You know what it is? For people, and, and what I do do, I will stand. You'll be in my audience Monday night. Right. Yeah. I will stay and thank everybody, personally. Take selfies with them. Yeah. I'm not that guy, oh, no, don't bother me. I'm going to my dressing room. Yeah. I think 
the world of entertainment today yeah. should learn a lesson too about being a little humble and thanking people. Yeah. Like yeah. We, the two guys we mentioned earlier, Pacino and De Niro, they wear disguises and hide. I said, why don't you become a monk and go up in the hills? Yeah. These people, you need them. Absolutely. And now they're realizing they do need them. Well, yeah. as of we course. Get, as, as we, you and I are about the same age, as we get older, we recognize it. That's why I've enjoyed my co I have always recognized yeah. it. That's yeah. funny. Well, well Gianni, That's it's That's obvious great. to me because um, uh, the presence you have, I believe greatness rubs off. And I believe that when you meet people and you engage with them, as you have, and we named all those names, there wasn't one you didn't know, and I, didn't even, I thought the Pope was going to be a joke. Uh, it, it, it just says a lot for you, but you're here in Maine, you're going to go to a wedding at a very beautiful beach, the best beach in Maine, Crescent Beach, and you're with Julia. Uh, we just want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I can't wait to see you on Monday. Uh, I, I don't know how much time I did. Dino, I yeah. need a time check when you will. Rob's next question. Yeah, go ahead. He, he says continue uh, yeah. to continue. So you've done the six family. You, you've got a, another book planned uh, yeah. with Patrick. W tell us a little bit about it. Where well, does that story go? Well, the, the six family is based on a true story. Right. It was uh, things we've experienced with John Gotti. Yep. trying to create a sixth family. Right. Because the five families in New York wouldn't go along with everything he was doing. And then he took one of my closest friends, he shot Tommy Bellotti, mm -hmm. Paul Castellani, he didn't care for her either, so I didn't care about him, but they killed him. But Bellotti. In front of but Tommy Bellotti was my best man in my first wedding. Wow. I know the Bellotti family for many years. Yeah. But uh, John, John did a lot of crazy things. He never liked me, I didn't care about him anyway, but to me, I, I'm, as much as I was around that life, mm -hmm. I didn't want to be in that life. I saw it. Well, I, I didn't trust him, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, and, and, and of course, John, John A. Light was on the show, and John A. Light testified and was involved with that family also. Oh, yeah. As we recall. Yes, yeah. But uh, your relationship with Gotti, uh, you talk a little bit about it, uh, was difficult, challenging. Did he try it when. Well, you know. I, I, I was going to the, was my neighborhood. Right. He'd come from Howard Beach. Yeah. He was a, a, a hijacker. JFK was his big area. Yeah. And he took that over from Tommy Ryan. I, I mean, I know his whole life. Yeah. And O'Neill, Della Croco, was the underboss of the Gambino family. Right. Until he died. And O'Neill was his rabbi. That's who he turned into. Mm -hmm. So you, have, you can't just become a part of the Gambino family. Right. Somebody got to sponsor you. Right. And most of these kids got sponsored because they were bringing in envelopes. Were you, asked to, were you asked to join the, uh, the mafia? They wouldn't even ask me. Why? They had so much respect okay. for Costello, my uncles, right. and that. Yeah. And, and even Costello told me early on. And I, I, I was enamored with it, I got to tell you. Sure. Because they, you know, they wear the best clothes. Oh, yeah. They drive the best cars. Nobody goes to work. Yeah. So thank God that Costello gave me a look on the inside because I'd be sitting in the club sometimes. Yeah. And these guys would come in with an envelope. Yeah. And then, you know, they'd turn around and say, whack that guy. Jesus. And that's really what you know, I'm thinking. And, 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 the guy and, just and, gave you 25000 Right. And they're telling him, whack him. Wow. But, you know, they, they, one of the things, uh, Gianni, that we asked this of John A. Light when he was on the show, uh, that what, uh, the theme of every movie, from Goodfellas to Goodfellas, is eventually, if you become a made man, you're probably going to be killed. I mean, I, mean I, I, I just, it's like, yeah, you want to go to Vietnam? Yeah, I want to be a forward observer. And, you know, I mean, the, the, the short life of, of, of a mafia guy was, I mean, they, I mean, they were being killed right and left. Or served their life in right. prison. Yeah, but the, the, the thing, you know, it, if you're going to get involved at any club, read the bylaws. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> to become a made man, when you're sworn in, you give up your family. They become your family. That's right. That's right. And they say it. If we ask you to kill your family, you'll do it. Yeah. 
Who's going to do that? You got to be nuts. Yeah. Well, that's so what I'm saying, G. Go, go join. I mean, I don't want to become a Cub Scout. Not, no, no, no. <laughs> boys, forget about that club. But what was it? So the, was it was the attraction, the money, uh, the, the power, uh, the women? What would be the attraction of a guy wanting to do that? Oh, a guy, a, a guy who had nothing. Yeah, right. I mean, John Gotti didn't have nothing. He had brawn. He already did some time, and he felt this is going to re- elevate him where he is, and it did. Yeah. yeah, But he died of the worst death in the world. Most people don't know how the guy died. I mean, he was spitting at the guards while he was in the hole in, in Denver. He was seven stories down, the worst prison in the world. Mm. And he got an abscess. They wouldn't give him any pain medicine. They wouldn't do nothing. Jeez. Turned into cancer and he died. Died like a rat. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so the, the, the John A. Light travels around the world <clears throat> telling young people, this is what you're looking forward to. Yeah. Uh, I managed to get through it. You certainly did. I mean, you came all that cream on the cream on the top of that coffee uh, with all your success. Well, you've never served any time, or even come close to it. No. And you, I never had handcuffs on. Yeah, yeah. No, I was smart enough, right, to lawyer up early on. <laughs> My first lawyer was Sidney Koshak. Do you know him? <laughs> you were seven years old when you lawyered up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, was, I was actually 14. <laughs> Whatever well, it was. No, because I'm sure what, Costello might have, must have helped you with Oh, that's the, who did it. Uh, that's right. No, I, I flew to Chicago when I was starting to go out to campaign sure. mm-hmm. for John F. Kennedy. And I, he said, give this envelope, you're going to meet a guy. They picked me up at O'Hare, brought me to the Palm House. And I meet Sidney Korshak. Mm-hmm. Korshak, I don't know if you read his book, his amazing book. But he really? was. No, I have not. No, but he was the Mr. Fix It. Mm-hmm. That was his nickname. Yeah. Oh, you don't know Korshak at all? Uh, no. Oh, my God. No. You, uh, this guy's a legend. He was yeah. Wasserman's attorney, Steve Wynn's attorney. Okay, yes. Oh, yeah, so okay. this guy is yes. huge. Okay. Now I know the level you're talking. Yes. No, so now I bring an envelope. Mm hmm. He opens, I give him the envelope, he opens it, and he said, do you know what's in here? I said, no. It was $10,000, I knew it was money, I would do that. And he takes out a retainer letter. He says, you sign here, I sign here. And he took the money, he said, now we could talk freely, now we're client privilege. Right. Even if they were wired it, they couldn't use it. Yeah. That's how Costello protected me all my life. When I was a courier, carrying all that money from Vegas and to the Vatican. I was a licensed courier, Lloyd's of London. They stop me sometimes. And I said, hold on, I'm a courier, you can't touch this. What do you, uh, would you have like an ID card or something? They gave me, yeah. They paid me, to, we were, I mean, they say 600 million. I don't know the number. What was the mafia, uh, what was the Vatican doing with that kind of money? They were laundering it for the casino. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, that's, this that's is incredible. Like it's fantastic. And to me, I'm not doing anything wrong. Well. I license. Yeah, like, right. I'd go on, I'll tell you, on Monday night, get off the plane. And I didn't sometimes get off the plane. Yeah. They'd come, they'd walk the bags down. The brothers and priests would take it and go. Uh, Gianni, getting back to your performances, uh, do, do you sing in like nightclubs in New York still? You, you were doing that. Right now, no, the, most of the nightclubs, are, the, the night business in New York is terrible. Oh, so it's not, you, you know. Yeah. I, I was at Feinstein's for 10 years. Yeah. I mean, I played every club. I've been doing this for 40 years as a nightclub act. 40? 40. I want a woman go play hide and seek. I want to go and bounce the moon, just like a toy balloon. You and I. We're just like a couple of tops Running around the meadow Picking up all those forgetting lots You make me feel so young You make me feel there were songs to be sung Bells to be rung And a wonderful fling to be flung And even when I'm old and gray I want to feel the way I do today Cause you make me feel so I have to 
just want to feel so. Talk about your singing, because you always, yeah. Sinatra taught you how to sing. How right. did he, what, did, what, what would he do to, to, to work with you and teach well, you how to sing? Well, he used to come to State Street, my, my supper club in, in Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. And I used to get up and sing just because of my club. Right. And then he came in a couple of times. He said, you know, when you get serious with this, I think I could help you. Yeah. So time went on, and I called Dorothy. I said, Dorothy, his the mother. old man said, that was his secretary. Oh. I said, the old man said, when I'm serious about singing, he'll help me. So she called me back. She said, yeah, okay. He'll be home Tuesday to Friday of this week. Come. Bring a bathing suit. I said, Dorothy, I don't want to <laughs> swim. I want to sing. She said, he said, bring a bathing suit. I said, okay. So I get to the house. Harry opens the door and he looks, where's your bathing suit? I said, what's with the bathing suit? I want to sing. He says, go in the back, go to the cabana, everything's clean. Put get the bathing, bathing suit, suit on, he'll be right out. <laughs> and I seen Sinatra in his white silk robe, a coffee cup and a cigarette at 2 o'clock. He gets up at 2 o'clock. He yeah. don't get up any time before that. Comes out, he's getting the pool. I said, Frank, what's with the swim suit? He's getting the pool. And this is going to be a, a, an awareness that your audience is not going to believe. He learned how to breathe from Tommy Dorsey. Huh. He was in the Dorsey band right. as a band singer. That's right. And you could never understand it. When does this guy breathe? Tommy Dorsey taught him what he taught me. But he taught him in the St. George pool in New York and submerged him. I got in the pool, and he said, hold your breath. And he timed me. He said, no, no, go in again, take a deeper breath, and to a lower diaphragm. None of us use your lower diaphragm, the brain. Right. It gives you more air. This is an instrument. When you could talk and do this, you're doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. And he showed me that. And then by two days, three days, I'm singing, sustaining notes, Then he taught me some things, and Amazing. that was it. <laughs> Amazing. Because that's what they talk about. When they talk about Sinatra, they say this man was able to carry the long note, uh, you know, without taking and a breath. And he was breath. this big. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They talk about that, you know, that he would sing and then where ordinary men would take a breath, he's still doing it. And, and that's why people were so impressed by that. And you oh, learned how to do it? I learned that with him and the phrasing. It gives me the opportunity, even as an actor, you know, it's sure. all about your delivery. Yes. Yeah. When I first listened to your CD several years ago, folks, and I said this in the first interview, I did call Gianni. I, my, my niece gave me your CD. I called the number. You answered the phone. We talked for 20 minutes. Uh, I remember as I listened to How many to years it, ago was that? Well, about four or five, just before the COVID hit, because you said, why don't you come down to New York and see me? And I said, I plan to do that. And then COVID hit. Oh. But I remember, for example, Summer Wind and, I, and some of the songs that you, that you did, how much you sounded. Um, I mean, it's very hard to imitate. I mean, people try to do it. Oh, yeah. Uh, but you... So you're different, but you're very, very similar. And that's because of, you think, because of this breath thing? Oh, definitely. Yeah. No, definitely. No. The phrasing and all that. And he told me something, too. <clears throat> Go in the mirror. Yeah. And don't sing a lyric. Talk to yourself and make yourself believe what you're saying. Interesting. Uh, you see, Bobby Rydell, my, my friend before he passed away, he did an album where he is uh, uh, crooning Sinatra, Bing Crosby, oh, he's uh, a great and Harry Coleman. Well. And, 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 of course, he was the youngest to appear at the Copacabana with Sinatra sitting there. Oh, yeah. And Rydell loved to sing Sinatra. And one night he did Summer Wind, and he said, Derry, did you tape it? I said, I sure did. And it, was, it, it reminded me very much of, of Frank. And, right. and, and, and uh, so you do pretty much his best, his, his best of songs when you do, do the act? No. No, I, I, do, I do two, because I'm taking it chronologically when I met him. Yeah. So I met him, I met him, I got a transistor radio in my hospital room, mm -hmm. and I turned it on. He was doing six shows a day at the New York Paramount already. Yes. 1949. Yep. Right. That's when, that's when the, the, the women were going nuts. Yep. Yeah. His hit, 1949, You Make Me Feel So Young. Yeah. Right. So I do that in my show. After Monday night, you're going to see the clips of Sinatra mm -hmm. with the Bobby Sox. I bought yeah. it all. Yeah. And then I do his hit. Yeah. Then I leave that alone 
keep going. And as we start hanging out together at the Sands Hotel with the Rat Pack, I got Dean, Sammy, all them on stage. But I, at that time, I do Dean's theme song. I do Sammy Davis's theme song. Nice. And then I go with Sinatra, with Elvis, 1961. Yeah. When they do the TV special the TV in Miami, special. If I'm not mistaken. And then I say, and I know what you're thinking, is he going to do an Elvis tune? And I am. I do an Elvis tune. It's not till the end of the show when he asked me, is when I die, I want you to dedicate a song to Ava Gardner and this song I want you to do. I never do a show without doing this tune that he taught me, and I've never done it without getting a standing ovation at the end of that tune. No kidding. I mean, it's, I mean the tune... Well, you'll see Monday night. Yeah, his we love were, for Ava was, uh, oh I mean, God. he was heartbroken when that, uh, what was that like? Because you were, you were oh, I'm, close I, to I both of them. I babysat him a lot. Yeah. I mean, he, she wasn't, you know, she was a player. Oh, yeah. And she told him, you know, you do what you do, I do. And she's a bigger star than he would ever be, right. even at that time. Yeah. And um, he couldn't control her. Right. See, Frank needs to control you. Right. When he married Mia Farrow, he moved on my block. He did. It was the worst thing in the world. They have a fighter come over my house. I said, get, you don't go, go over there with her, that little kid. We didn't even know why he I married I never her. understood that connection. Nobody did. Yeah, she was no. like a little kid. And then she, that's where he tried to control her. Yeah. He wanted to quit that show. She wouldn't. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. Uh, uh, Rosemary's baby, very yeah. upset about it. He, you know, she's not going forward. And nobody knew what she was doing. It was like a boy. Yeah, you know? yeah. she did yeah, look different. A, a funny story. A very close friend of mine, Al Malnick, who's still my mentor. We met Al at uh, Lee's funeral, remember, in Boston? Yes, Oh, yes. yeah, he loved oh, my oh, yeah. God, yeah. Well, Malnick is still a very close friend of mine. Yep. And Maya Lansky calls me up. And he said, Johnny, <laughs> Frank is not at Alvin's bar mitzvah. I said, we supposed to be. He said, well, if you're supposed to be, I wouldn't be calling you. <laughs> so now I got to go upstairs. Frank's in the hotel. Yeah. I found blue. I knock on the door, and the security guard said, Johnny, uh, he's not coming. I said, well, he's got to come. And I hear breathing near the door. Yeah. And, you know, there was always so many crazy things up there. And I had... You know, I got Maya Lansky, and you ain't telling me what I can do and not do. Right. And Al Malnick's right across on Indian Creek waiting for a bar mitzvah for 100 people, and so not supposed to be there. <clears throat> so I said, listen, I'm coming in. And nobody's saying anything. So I backed up a while, and I hit the double doors. The hotel door just spread out. She was hanging on to the door. She went flying into the middle of the floor. Jeez. She weighed about 10 pounds. Uh, right, right. Sinatra comes out. I said, what the hell's going on? I said, Frank, what are you doing? I said, why aren't you at Alvin's house? And he looks at her. She told him it was called off. I said, how do you call off a bar mitzvah? Yeah. He said, I'll be right out. Okay. That dresser brought him over. But this is with the beginning of them ending. Yeah. Because then that's when they all broke up. But no, yeah. but uh, there's certain people. That if you're going to say you're going to be there, even Sinatra had a show. Wow. Right. Had a show. Well, I'm sure you knew that whole crew. Well, right? Lee, Lee would tell us stories about Al Melnick. Uh, he, he, he really took care of Lee in, in his later years. He really did. And, well, uh, and, and Al uh, paid for that, uh, uh, the funeral and the yes, tour around a, Boston Harbor. And, yeah, uh, big, a big uh, ship. And Al came up. And and we, I, I had, oh, Al, Al liked Al. I know, I liked like, Yeah. Oh, me. yes. Oh, oh yes. No. Uh, but uh, pretty uh, pretty impressive guy. Uh, 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 yes. And uh, you know, Rob and I were, uh, you know, invited to go to that. And yeah. I was very honored. And I met I met that man. He was I, sort I, of uh, Meyer's replacement. Yes. Or, uh, what's, what's the connection there yeah. uh, between him and, can you talk about it? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it's, uh, no, when, when Meyer was stepping down, and he was, you know, he, he exiled himself in Israel for right. a while, and uh, came back. The rumor is that Al took over. Right. I don't know if it's true. 
Yeah. He denies it. Uh, but, but Oh, yeah. I mean, well, Al graduated St. Louis Law School. Mm -hmm. His first client was the Teamsters. Jimmy Hoffa. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, that's right. So yeah. what else do you need to know? <laughs> you don't need to know. I didn't say anything. It's no part of history. No. Right. But such a friend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other than the Godfather, uh, uh, Gianni, what was another one of your favorite movies that you did? I know you did The Freshman, right? Well, The Freshman was a, a fun movie to that do. That was fun, and, wasn't it? And I, I was able to repay Marlon Brando back. Yeah. Right. Because he didn't want to do the movie, and he hated Paramount because they, you know, he had a, a, a cap of a million dollars. Oh, we did. <laughs> oh, no, know they, they they really did a number on him. Oh yeah. Because they knew he needed the film to come back, and he came yeah. back big. So I convinced Warner Brothers, I can get him to do the part. And this was one of the movies that Michael LaBelle and Andrew Bergman and I produced. We produced that. We produced Chances Are, with the. Um, Oh, uh, Robert Downey? Or? Robert Downey Jr. Yes, right. And um, the other kid, I, I didn't even like the kid, but he was in it. And, and uh, I forgot the woman. And then I did striptease with Demi Moore. Right. Sure, yes, yes, right. So that was the three films we did. I got him $15 million wow. to do that part. No kidding. Wow. And he said, I said, now my debt's paid to you. He said, I don't know how you did this, but thank you. Wow. But there, no, and he reprised but, the role of the God. It looked just like the Godfather. Well, that's he put what on it was some about. Weight. See, but the, the union, they couldn't say it. So even when the kid was about to say, "No, you don't, don't, don't call him that," so we got away without even saying the Godfather. Right, right. We put him in makeup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that what was we did. that was great. But it's, it's a fun movie. If anybody hasn't seen that movie, oh no, it's uh, yeah, Robert it, Downey Jr. and uh, Bruno oh. Kirby. Yeah, well, Kirby died so too young. A good actor. Yeah, and, and how about Coppola? Did you enjoy work, working with him, Francis Ford Coppola? You know, I've asked that. I've been asked that question a couple of times. Coppola was just like us. Yeah, he was a young director, his first big movie. Yeah, and he didn't know whether he was going to be there tomorrow. They kept threatening him. Right, because he fought for Pacino, and if he didn't get Pacino, he wasn't going to do it. Yeah, and that's why in the eleventh hour they gave him to him. But we never knew the movie was even going to come out. When you were doing it, yeah. did you realize that how good it was going to be? Or just I really didn't care because I was making so much money. I did it for my ego. The book was already in its third print. Just being in the movie, I, I'd go places and they knew I was in it. I didn't care if they did it or not. I was and just having fun. We, we, I, <clears throat> I mentioned Jimmy Kahn because when you, you did our first interview, you said, because people have asked you this every time they meet you, uh, he was kicking the crap out of you, beating you with a with a, a trash can, and what you said was you were actually injured. You actually got hurt. I mean, he, he wasn't well, playing around. Well, well, again, most of the actors were very generous with me, like Brando, yeah. Yeah. Richard Conti, Sterling Hayden, the new guys. Again, you. The new guys, the fact that I had no, not studied. No experience. They didn't know how I got this part. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was a pivotal role. Yes, of course. I mean, oh, if, yeah. if this guy didn't undermine the family, right. the story falls apart. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, no, no. You're, you're one of the main actors. So I didn't know whether they just didn't like me because maybe I was going to destroy the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I really didn't care. I, mean, yeah. I was making so much money at that time. Again, I was there for my ego. Yeah. I wasn't trying to prove my being an actor. But then when I saw the opportunities, I said, this is easy. We sat there, won three Oscars. 
So on, you, I choose not to have a, you choose not to have a stuntman and get the crap kicked out of him. You, you, it was you. <laughs> no, but we choreographed it. I never did a movie before, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So we're, we're from the steps to pulling up. We had, these are all camera setups. Yeah. Because they're adjusting the lenses. Right. So we did this for like 10 hours. <laughs> now the next day we come in, we're supposed to shoot it. Yeah. Right. Well, from the first shot, as soon as he gets out of the car, he throws a bat at me. That wasn't an even a take. And he must have been practicing all night. He bounced right off my head the first shot. Christ. So I fell behind the car. Next time you watch it, I fell behind the car and they yelled cut. Yeah. And I got a gash on my head. And it's my first movie, so they come over, you okay? I said, yeah, yeah. If you want to continue? I said, of course I you know, I ain't gonna say yeah. I'm doing this. So we continue, now we go into the garbage bales. Right. right. Now <laughs> understand. These are not plastic garbage bales. No, no, they were real. These are the old steel ones. <laughs> right. And we choreographed that. <clears throat> and he was supposed to you know, simulate banging me. And I'm, you know, I'm not even getting these touching me. Yeah. He broke my elbow, chipped it. Jesus. Yeah. Now I'm saying, wait a minute, I got to crawl out here and get kicked <laughs> and go on a hydrant. Yeah. Well, I made a decision. I'm never going to do what? a fight scene again in my life. Yeah. I'll do love scenes. That's where I'm going. That's Amen. It. This Amen. Is, uh, no, not a fighter. <laughs> he drop kicks me and then rolls me over and broke two ribs. Cracked yes. Me. That's why you broke ribs. Jesus. And I'm saying, what and he's hell? laughing. Yeah. But he deliberately did right. this. He says it even yeah. in interviews. Tried to hurt you. And in fact, the, the, the offerer, yeah. That you mentioned earlier. Right. The director tells him, teach this guy a lesson. So that put them in a major lawsuit. And you being a lawyer, how they agreed to settle with me is defamation per se. Defamation is very hard to prove. That's right. Defamation per se, you put me in a crime. That's right. Correct. So you Slender can't defend it. Mm-hmm. Because in that movie, they said I beat her up, and I hit her. There's a scene, she's got the black and blue on. Taya Shire. Comes in, Taya Shire, and she said, Gianni gave me this beating. Where'd you get the black guy? Oh, she did? She said, Johnny Russo did it. Not call her the character they owned. They don't own my name. <laughs> well, I have to say, and I said this earlier, uh, you know, we didn't know we were gonna get to know you. But the scenes with her also, when she's running around pulling the plates off the thing, oh, yeah. you know, grabbing oh, All that stuff is so dramatic. It yeah. was so done yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's yeah. really done well. Uh, the wedding scene, how long did it take to film that thing? Is that we thing we like, shot it for a week because- For a week. They wanted to establish the whole cast in there. Sure. They were all there. Right. So there were all those great, I, that, that to me was, that was a party. I bet, and then you had a, a lot of the real uh, authentic uh, Mafia. Oh, yeah, every, they all wanted to be there, and they, yeah. and they wanted them there. So yeah. it was just fun. Interesting. You know, that, that, I mean, that was a... And Al Martino, uh, what was he like? Uh, well, yeah. Al, Al Martino was a humble guy, too, because he wanted that part. Yeah. And, you know, he had a lot of problems with Sinatra oh, I know right afterwards. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? As you did. Well, I did it for a minute. I didn't put up with his yeah. stuff. He called me up. He didn't want me in the movie. Right. No, he, I mean, I, but I used his whole dialogue against him. Because when he called me, Dorothy called me, he said, the old man wants to talk to you. So I get on the phone, he says, you're a friend of mine, right, Johnny? I said, of course. He says, if I asked you to do a favor, would you do it? I said, whatever you want, Frank. He said, I don't want you to do the movie The Godfather. I said, no problem, he caught me off guard. I wouldn't do it, and I hung up. Then I said to myself, am I crazy? <laughs> so I waited a day, and I called him back. I said, Frank, you're a friend of mine, right? He said, of course. I said, if I asked you to do a favor, would you do it? Anything you want. All right. I said, okay. If I asked you not to do Here to Eternity, would you have done it? He hung up on me. <laughs> Get out of here. But why didn't he want you to do it? I found this out because of Ava. Mario Puzo, why he hated Mario Puzo? Because Mario Puzo wrote the Johnny Fontaine character, obviously, with Sinatra. Right, sure. sure. But the mob didn't get him the part. Ava Gardner got him the part. And the way she got him the part really upset him. She, the part in From Here to Eternity. Yes. Yeah. Right. She got him the part in Here to right. Eternity, yeah. right. not the mob. But in the movie, 
it said that yeah. He went to the mob. He was in the office. I got this part. And yeah. That's when he says, smack. I'm like, act like a man. The story is, and I know it. I heard it from her. That's why she went and did what she did. She broke up with him. They wanted nothing to do with him. His agent at William Morris was George Woods. George Woods had an apartment on 72nd Street in the West, East End. His neighbor, thank God his neighbor was home. She smelled gas come from George's apartment. Mm -hmm. She called him at William Morris. Said, we got, the soup has got to get into your apartment. We smell gas. So when they went in, Sinatra was half in the oven. Jeez. And he That's inhaled awesome. so much gas, he damaged his vocal cords. That's why he couldn't sing for a That's year. That's right. right. He, he was out of commission for a while. And that was the end of his career, everybody right. predicted. Right. He's walking through New York and nobody recognized him. It, was, it would look like a basket case. Yes. She went and slept with old man Cohen. Old man Cohen wanted Ava. A lot of everybody wanted Ava Garner. But Ava went to his wife. She was friends with them. She said, before I do this, I want you to know why I'm doing it. She said, what are you doing? Acapulco was the big destination for California. Yeah. You go for long weekends. Right. She said, I'm going to go with your husband to Acapulco and let him have his way with me. She said, what? Why are you doing this? She said, well, I destroyed Sinatra's career. And he said, if I did this, he'd give him the part. That's what got Sinatra so crazy. Nobody knows this story. Oh, wow. And she went and spent three days. And when she came back, she went to say to the wife and said, and the wife said, how could you be with him? He smells. Yeah. <laughs> the wife ain't screwing him. Ava Gardner's <laughs> screwing him. <laughs> what a story. I, oh I think Sinatra, in his biographies that I've seen, doesn't he acknowledge that? Doesn't he say that the mafia? I think he says the mafia had nothing to do with me getting my pot. Oh, he says it. He, sa he said that many times. I know that, but they exploited it in a movie called in The Godfather. Right. Exactly. Right. Ask anybody in The Godfather who got on the pot. They, they said right. the mafia. Make an, yeah, and the whole thing with make an offer he can't refuse and the contract. Yeah. Well, th th I think that because when I watched Sinatra say that and he vehemently denied it, and it was him saying, no, no, that's all wrong. That's not what happened. And I forget whether he, uh, whether he admitted it was Ava Gardner, but- No, he, he didn't. Yeah. He would and of course, never admit it. He didn't no. know he was going to get the Academy Award for supporting actor and all that sort of stuff. And, no. And, but he was, he was in the dregs, the dregs of New York City, and people didn't even want to talk to him on the street. No. And, uh, I mean, he, he loved her so much. Went to hell in a handbasket. Oh, yeah. I, I flew to, I flew to Mexico with him one night. She was doing the tour. Did you ever meet the bullfighter? Yeah. Did well, you ever meet him? Of course. I was there. <laughs> did I meet him? Bullfighter. Wait a minute. Not only did I Ava meet Gardner's him. Ava boyfriend. He yeah. made me Sinatra. We went, we, went, we went to Ballow's Jewelers. I remember on Arthur Garvey Drive during the day. And he bought a, a diamond cuff. After his show, we fly to Mexico. We get there. And he walks into the hotel. He says, give me keys to Ava's room. And I could see their look. And they're like, well, wait a minute. They know who he was. And I said, Frank, I'll wait down here. He says, no, come up with me. And I said, I don't want to go upstairs. Because I can only imagine. This is like 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. So he has the key. He opens the door. Now I'm seeing not one set of man's clothes, two men's sets of clothes, yeah. her clothes. And we, he goes into the bedroom. I didn't oh go in the bedroom. God. And she's doing these two guys. <laughs> <laughs> he throws the bracelet on the bed. He cried all the way home to Mexico, oh, like a no. little kid. Uh, oh, God. Gianni, I swear to God, we're ending one of the most incredible stories I've ever we're seen. We're ending? Every time, yeah, we, we, we're wrapping it up. And, 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 and I, can, I can't thank you enough. The only thing it. that I can say is we, we do want to, I would love to visit you. Number two, we'd like Amen. to have you back on. You're a fascinating person. I can't thank you enough. No, I want you to enjoy your, your weekend in Maine. I can't wait to see you oh, on but look Monday. at the weekend. I mean, I came for a wedding, and now we're yeah. making a, a, a show. an event out of it. Now, yeah. Gianni, uh, you are a presence. Uh, you are a legend unto yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to be back, and uh, we've got the, 
Uh, another star coming on, uh, B.B. Buell, who uh, is the mother of Liv Tyler, uh, and, uh, and uh, she's going to be a rock and roll fun. icon. And a lot right. of fun. Uh, and thank you for watching us on the Runlet and Baldacci Report. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Gianni. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Hey, no, thank you. Hey, hey. Thank you so much. No, please. Gianni will be here in Portland, Maine, February 24th at the Portland Elks Lodge. Doors and dinner at 6 p.m. Show at 7.30.